In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new interface building features in the v-release of Quantum ADK for multi-layer stacks. First, we'll have a look at the new generic interface builder and use it to replicate an MRAM stack from a research paper. Then I'll briefly introduce our dedicated high-k metal gate and MRAM builder blocks in the workflow builder. Starting with our first example, we'll create a structure based on this paper from a few years ago. Conventionally, we might just analyze the magnetic tunnel junction part alone, but uh, studies have shown that in order to reproduce experimental device properties accurately, the simulation should contain more of the surrounding stack layers to, for instance, account for finite size effects in the iron cobalt layers. In this example, we'll omit the top and bottom electrodes, as well as the substrate, its oxide, and the bottom tantalum buffer but we'll keep the top uh, tungsten cap as well as the entire synthetic antiferromagnetic stack, starting with the platinum seed layer. We'll also be using pure iron for the iron cobalt layers as we can add in the cobalt alloying later. To do this, we'll use our new multi-layer interface plugin, so let's jump into the builder and get started. Here I've added the required materials to my builder stash ahead of time, so we can go straight ahead and open up the interfaces plugin. We'll start by dropping in the platinum seed layer, then add the first two layers of the antiferromagnetic stack. You can use the duplicate button here to quickly repeat the layer three times, but before we do that, we can set the cleave plane for platinum to 111 and reduce the number of layers to better match the thickness in the paper. You can also do this after adding all the layers, but this just shows that with a bit of planning ahead of time, you can save yourself a few clicks. Notice here that the plane indices are both inclusive, so when it says 00, zero it means there's a single layer, layer zero. And when it says 0, 1, it means you have two layers. There's 0 and 1. Next, we have two freely defined layers of cobalt and ruthenium. And now you're free to either drop in a new cobalt from the builder stash or just duplicate an existing cobalt layer, whichever makes more sense in your case. The rest is just the same process, repeated, so we'll just add in the remaining layers and tweak their thicknesses as necessary to match the paper. After defining all the layers, we need to run a lattice matching calculation, which produces a list of stack configuration candidates where the strain and size of the stacks are varied. To do this, we must first select a layer to keep fixed, toward which all other layers will try to match their lattices against. This choice depends on the application, but will typically be some key component of the stack. In this case, we'll choose the pinned iron layer in the magnetic tunnel junction, and now in the match settings, there are some options to tailor the lattice matching algorithm, such as restricting the largest surface area a candidate can have, or the smallest angle between A and B vectors, essentially filtering out uh, unwanted candidates. Once we're happy with the setup, we can start the calculation. For a large system such as this, calculating the lattice matches is going to take a fair bit of time, so a pro tip is to set up as much as possible before hitting recalculate. The calculation is performed in a thread though, so you can put it in the background and work on something else, or you can cancel it if you need to. For this video, I'll just skip ahead, but just to give you an idea, this calculation took about 10 minutes on my laptop. We'll have a look at the calculation speed for a smaller five layer stack later in the video. Once the calculation finishes, the plot is populated with the list of stack candidates in terms of their size, in number of atoms, and their largest mean absolute strain. The per layer main mean absolute strain is also shown in the table as well as the individual strain components they are calculated from. When you select different candidates, the table updates as well as the configuration preview. The default candidate is selected based on the best balance between smallest size and strain, and can be recalled using the reset button in the plots. The plot can be zoomed by using the mouse wheel and pan by holding the right mouse button and dragging. There's also the home button to reset the zoom and pan. 
The preview shows the stack lying on its side, so the layers go from left to right along the C-axis of the configuration. For some applications, it can be important to know the crystallographic planes terminating the stack on the sides, so the crystal directions in A and B of the fixed layer are reported in the preview window. You can also open the surface directions panel to sort on the A or B directions and make the selection in that way. At this point, changing most things will necessitate a full recalculation, but changing the thickness of a layer only requires a brief calculation to update the number of atoms in the plot, so this can be done freely. Once we've selected the candidate, we can move on to finalize the stack. The table is now locked ex except for the new displacement column, which you can use to tweak the positioning of layers relative to each other. This can be useful if you need a particular bonding situation at an interface, or if you need to change the distances between layers. And with that we're done and can click create to send it back into the builder. The functionality of the plugin is fully scriptable and we'll find a snippet of what we just did in the builder console. You can now send it to workflows to set up some analysis, or use our other plugins to, for instance, add cobalt to the iron layers. In the workflow builder, we also have dedicated HiK metal gate and MRM stack builders that are built on the same framework as the interfaces plugin. The main difference between these and the builder plugin is that they take advantage of our pre-trained MTP potentials. In the case of the HiK metal gate builder, these are used to create proper amorphous layers by using molecular dynamics. And in the case of the MRAM Builder, the MTP potentials are used to perform geometry relaxation on the stack. Both are limited to a subset of materials for which MTP potentials are currently available, but that list may grow in the future. In the HiK Metal Gate Builder, you're limited to at most four layers, but can choose if they should be crystalline or amorphous versions of the relevant materials for a given layer. The edit icon in the table allows you to edit the density and stoichiometry of amorphous layers. When there's only one crystal layer, no strain matching is required, and so the lateral stack size can be edited in terms of multiples of the surface indices of the crystal layer. If no crystal layer is present, the stack size can be set directly in angstroms. As soon as we have two or more crystal layers, the process is identical to the interfaces plugin, where you can set the cleave plane for crystal layers, the layer length in terms of atomic planes, and choose a layer to fix. You can change the lattice match settings and recalculate to populate the plot with candidates and perform the selection as we did before. Notice that you also have the layer displacement options directly available here, but only in the surface directions. You can send this job as it is by itself, if you just want the configuration, or continue building the workflow with additional analyses. The AMRAM Builder is simpler still. You are not limited in number of layers, but as mentioned before, you're limited in the types of materials basically only ones that are relevant for magnetic tunnel junctions and some like metallic capping buffer layer materials. Similar to the high K metal gate builder amorphous layers, the plane properties for iron cobalt allow you to set the cobalt alloying percentage. We'll fix the MGO layer and recalculate, and here you can see in real time how long a setup with five crystal layers can take to calculate.
And that concludes this demonstration of the interface building capabilities in the v-release of Quantum ATK. We've looked at how to build a large multi-layer stack using the generic interface builder, exploring some of its features, and looked at the dedicated versions of it for high-k metal gate stacks and MRAM stacks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.